Hello, I'm Mr. Reese, and this video is going to concern the basics of angles. And what this video is going to go into essentially is this. We'll focus on how to name, measure, and classify angles. In addition, we'll also discuss the angle addition postulate. Let's first just go into the definition of what an angle is. The definition of an angle, quite simply, is just two rays coming from the same endpoint. Symbolically, we use this symbol to designate angle. Assuming these rays do not overlap, you'll see that they'll shoot off into different directions. So each of those two rays are considered a side, or a leg, for the angle. But where the two rays originate, that's referred to as the vertex. This is a key term. Typically, angles are identified by their vertex. I'm showing you here another angle, but I want you to note that these two angles are not necessarily different sizes. Though the rays here are drawn shorter, these are actually the same angle. The only difference is that we drew the angle shorter. So what makes an angle different from another angle is not necessarily how long these sides are drawn, but rather how far open that they, uh, that they are uh, drawn. Because we can draw these things as long as we want, these two angles essentially are congruent. And recall that congruent simply means that they are the same size and the same shape. And that's the symbol we use to denote that. Now let's say you wanted to measure an angle. So we're taking that red one there and we're just blowing this one up. What you do is you get what is called a protractor looks something like this and you should note that a protractor has numbers like uh, on the inside and on the outside so you're seeing it here and here what you'll want to do is you're only going to use one row of numbers you're not going to use both rows so what you do is you just focus on the numbers that are counting up let's first work on just positioning this protractor what you want to do is you want to position it so that the vertex is in line with the crosshairs right here and some protractors, they won't have crosshairs. They'll have like a little hole punched in there. Again, that's where the vertex goes, which is why it's key. You'll want to line up one of the sides of the angles with zero. Now, if it's zero on the right-hand side, then, then that's what you do. If it's zero on the left, then it's over here. Now, remember, when you count, you count up from zero. So is because zero on mine is on the inside, it is the inside numbers that I'm going to be looking at. So then what you hear is you look at this and you go, oh, it's right here. That's 34 degrees. And that's essentially it. Remember that you need this to be lined up with zero. So if you're measuring it like this, you'll notice that it's kind of in between two different values here. You won't want these to be zero. Now, if you don't have this lined up with zero, then you're going to have to do some arithmetic. Take the larger value, subtract the smaller value, and whatever the difference is, that's your answer. I've rotated this thing 27 degrees, so technically we would start there, and you would go 60 minus 27 to still get the answer. Thus, angles are different only because of their measurement. Now, there are a couple key angles that you'll want to know. 90 degrees looks something like this, in that it'll make something that's the equivalent of the corner of an ordinary piece of paper or this rectangle here that you see. That's a 90 degree angle. 180 degrees is the equivalent of a straight line. That's when you have one ray going uh, in one direction and then the second ray going in the opposite direction. Now why know these? This gives you an expectation of what your answer is going to be. Like this is 90 degrees. So if you look at an angle like this you should expect that when you get your protractor out and then you try to assess how many degrees the angle is, you already have an expectation as you measure this that the answer is going to be less than 90. So if I move this over correctly and I look at the two values, I have 40 and 140, you know it's 40 only because of the fact that, again, it's less than 90. You know that it's not going to be more than 90. In other words, 140. Angles typically are categorized by their size. This first angle is less than 90 degrees, and we say that that is an acute angle. 
Any angle that's more than 90 degrees is considered obtuse. And then the other two angles we had already discussed. 90 degree angle is a right angle. And right, by the way, is short for upright. You'll notice that this is on the ground. And then this side here is standing upright. That's why it's called a right angle. Notice the marking there with the box. The box is a signification to you. It tells you 90 degrees. And you'll see this a lot. Instead of writing in the number 90, it'll just sim you'll just simply be given that little symbol there, that little box. A straight angle typically is 180. And you'll know usually because they'll just tell you that it's a straight line, or it'll just simply look like a straight line. So how about we do an example here? Let's say we got this triangle. Let's classify angles A and B. We'll start off with A. You could, if you like, get your protractor out and then just kind of simply measure. You can see that the angle is definitely less than 90 degrees. Or you can just use your judgment. That doesn't look like a corner. Therefore, definitely less than 90. So that's an acute angle. Likewise, angle B is definitely more than 90 degrees. So we would say that is obtuse. Note the symbols here, angle A, angle B. We're naming it based on the vertex. So how about now that we name a few angles? Let's start off with this particular angle right here, which I have shaded in. Name that particular angle in different ways. Again, naming the angles is based on the vertex. So for this angle, you'll notice that they meet right here at R. So we can simply name it as angle R. However, we can also use three letters to name an angle. And you would do this by using the vertex and then using a point on each side of the angle. We have one point right here, point B. We also have point E, which lies on this side of the angle. So therefore, we can incorporate E and B into this. And something like BRE would work. Now, whenever you name an angle, and if you're going to use three letters, the vertex must go in the middle. That's how we identify them. As long as you have the vertex in the middle, the naming is correct. You could have the E first instead, and then the B second, but we couldn't replace the R. It would still be in the center only because that's how we identify the vertex. So here's a question for you. There are times when you have to use three letters. The question is, when? Quite simply, you'd use it when one letter is just simply unclear. For example, if I were referring to angle E, would you know which one I'm talking about? Hopefully, you see more than one angle E. Here's one angle E. Here's a second angle E. And do you see the third? There's a third one right there, that whole thing. In other words, both of them together. Because of that, just stating angle E isn't enough because we wouldn't know which one you were talking about. Therefore, if you just simply use three letters all the time, you're fine. But you can get away with one letter as long as it's very clear which particular angle you're talking about. Up here, there's only one angle R. But here, we couldn't just simply state angle E. Let's do an example. Let's say that we wanted to draw and label right angle I, D, K. Well, if it's a right angle, then obviously we're going for something that's 90 degrees. Keep in mind here, D is in the middle. That should tell you what the vertex here is. So something like this. Now, since I, D, K is supposed to be 90 degrees, it should be pretty obvious that it's 90, but how do we signify that? Remember, just simply drawing a 90 degree angle, well, at least something that looks like 90 degrees, isn't enough. You would need some symbol there to indicate that you know that it's 90 degrees. Namely, something like this. Now we know it's 90, and now we're good. We're going to finish this one off with the angle addition postulate. A postulate, remember, is something that we know is true, but is just simply not proven. It's just simply assumed to be true. The angle addition postulate simply states this. If you have the measure of one angle, 
and then the measure of an adjacent angle. And if you added those two angles together, then the result would be the whole thing. That's really it. Take two pieces that are adjacent, add them up, and you get the whole thing added together. So essentially, that's it. Here's an example. You're given these two particular angles, AOB and AOC. Therefore, what's BOC? A lot of times, geometry students will look at a problem but not actually write in the angles. And it's a good idea to do that. Angle AOB is right here. So let's just go ahead and write in 70 degrees. AOC is 125. Now, that's the whole thing. Essentially, with 125 being the whole thing here, that means that if I take this angle and add it to this, I should get 125. Since we are asked to determine BOC, this angle here, I'll refer to it as X, then what we do shouldn't be too difficult. If you take X, and if you add it to 70, we know the result is supposed to be 125. That's all the angle addition postulate is. If you subtract 70 from both sides, we'd have our solution. That's it. How about we do one last one? Say so you're given angle AOB being 8x plus 2, BOC being 2 times 2x plus 1, and you're given AOC. So solve for x. Just as before, let's go ahead and write in our angle all the different values that we know. So we have AOB being 8x plus 2. We have BOC being 2 times 2x plus 1. And we know the whole thing is 130 degrees. That's angle AOC. So the way we're going to set this up is we're going to take this angle here, add it to this one, and they both total to 130. So again, it's those first two angles added together, set equal to 130. And then from here, you're just using algebra to finish off. So that would mean distributing here, then collecting like terms. Subtract 4 from both sides. Then divide by 12 to finish off. And that's really all there is to it. That's it for this one. I'll see you next time.